Human excretory system. Human excretory system includes a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters and the urinary bladder and the urethra. The branch of medicine which deals with the study of the anatomy, the physiology and the pathology of the kidneys is called as nephrology. A person having the problem with his or her kidneys, they'll approach, I mean they'll consult the nephrologist, the specialist in nephrology. As the kidneys are not alone the parts of excretory system, even if you talk about what is other branch deals with the study of entire excretory system of both male and the female, it is urology. Urology is a branch of science which deals with the study of male and the female excretory system and also male reproductive system too. So the branch of science which deals with the study of male reproductive system is also the urology. Obviously the specialist is called as urologist. Okay, you can see in the picture the entire excretory system and also the kidneys. Let's talk about the kidneys, where these kidneys are located and what is its shape. Kidney, even the shape of the kidney, even a small kid can say is a bean shape, you know well. Means here the kidneys are the reddish brown color structures and they are actually located in between the last thoracic and the third lumbar vertebrae. Already I told you the uh, vertebral columns formula in the previous uh, uh, chapter. If you talk about the kidneys location, it is extending from the last thoracic. The thoracic vertebrae number is 12. So that's why I referred as a T12 to the third lumbar vertebrae. And moreover, if you talk about the, both the kidneys, in that of the location of the kidneys, the right kidney is somewhat inferior because of the presence of the liver on the right side. So right kidney is somewhat inferior when you compare with the case of the left kidney guys. You can sense that in the case of the picture too. And coming to the case of here about the another phenomenon, the kidneys are also protected by the two pairs of the floating ribs and where they are actually located. Kidneys are attached to the dorsal abdominal wall guys. They are attached to the dorsal abdominal wall. And these are the organs which are called as retroperitoneal organs which already we mentioned in another chapter of animal kingdom. I mean even animal kingdom and also structural organization. You can go through that. So these are the best example for retroperitoneal organs. Why it's retroperitoneum? It's already been discussed in other ones, other chapters. And the kidneys measurement, how much length they are. They are about 10 to 12 centimeters in length. And coming to the case of their width, it is 5 to 7 centimeters. And the thickness is 2 to 3 centimeters. And the weight, the weigh around 120 to 170 grams in weight, guys. So, these are the kidneys which are the major excretory organs of the human being. And uh, if you talk about the sectional view of the kidneys, if you talk about the case of the sectional view of the kidneys in the picture, you can see that very clearly that in the sectional view, if you talk about the outer is the convex and inner surface of the kidney is convex. As a bean, how the bean looks, you know well, the bean how it looks. So outer is a convex here, outer surface is convex and inner is a concave. And the inner concave side there is a notch is present called as a hilum. Hilum is a notch present in the case of the uh, inner concavity side of the kidney. From this notch the hilum, the blood vessels, you know well like renal artery, renal vein are the blood vessels which are going to be, uh, renal artery enters, renal vein exits. And even if you come across the nerves and the lymphatic vessels, everything is the passage into the kidney through the hilum or hilus. Next, after this, if you come across in the picture, for example, here, if you talk about this here, inner side, cortex and the medulla. First of all, I would like to discuss about the outer is the cortex and inner is the medulla. If you see the kidney sectional view there, the outer is somewhat light brown in color and inner is a dark brown in color. So outer is cortex and inner is medulla. And inside the medullary region of concavity side of the hilum towards inner side. Hilum is I said the notch. 
and the inner is a broad funnel shaped structure called as the pelvis or you can call it as a renal pelvis pelvis or the renal pelvis is a broad funnel shaped structure and that itself extends as a ureter ureter are the tubes which emerging out from the kidneys and the next one is if you talk about the there are the some projections are present in the case of here the pelvis is a funnel shaped structure this funnel it shows the projections and those projections are called as a calyx or calices calices and calyx the singular and the plural so the renal calyx renal calices renal is the word applicable for the kidneys you know pretty well about it so these are the important terminology the hilum and the calyx or the calices and the next one is if you observe that there are some conical masses are seen in the medullary part of the kidney they are nothing but called as a renal pyramids you are observing the pyramidal shaped structures the pyramidal shaped structures in the medullary part is called as nothing but the renal pyramids and the tip of the renal pyramids are called as nothing but renal papillae guys next very very important point here it had been faced the, by the majority my majority of the times in the national wide examinations guys the cortex extends into the medulla i mean in between that renal pyramids if you see that there are some columns are present called as a renal columns are columns of bertini i repeat once again these guys the extensions of cortex into the medulla is called as a columns of bertini or renal columns let's have a highlighting things of the human excretory system here it is kidneys where they are located the last thoracic to third lumbar where they are attached to the dorsal abdominal wall and one more thing you can also come across the kidney is covered by a capsule the tough capsule you can you can see in the picture there i mean in the cross sectional view i mean sorry in the sectional view not is cross sectional and the highlighting things of this here it is cortex medulla and the renal pyramids in the uh, medullary region notch the hilum the funnel shaped structure is called as a pelvis and the projections of this pelvis is called as a calyx or calices and the extension of cortex into the medulla is called as columns of bertini or renal column let's discuss about the nephron the uriniferous tubule the functional unit of the kidney where actually the filtration of the blood happens in order to form the excretory waste the urine in each kidney the number of nephrons are around 1 million nephrons in each kidney but these number of nephrons will won't remain throughout your life i mean the human being's life after 40 years of age every 10% of the nephrons are going to be reduced they are destroyed so that's why you can see the urinary related problems is most common in the case of the elderly age when compared to the case of this young age how we can say in the case of even the heart attack problems and all will be seen in the case of elderly age which are very common the heart attack phenomenon in both men and women but whereas it's more common in the case of elderly age here also the problem of urinary ferous problems i mean the kidney related problems in the elders because of for every 10 years after 40 years for every 10 years 10% of uh, nephrons are going to be reduced they are going to be vanish destructed moving on to the case of the part of nephron which you can see in the diagrammatic picture there clearly here the nephron consists of as i said is a functional unit of the kidney you know well the blood vessel which brings the blood to the kidneys for the purpose of the elimination i mean the filtration and the elimination of waste is renal artery so we can say this is the blood vessel which is rich in urea renal artery is a rich in urea actually speaking here it is because whatever the urea synthesized in the liver it is brought to the kidneys in order to eliminate because you know well some of the nitrogenous waste they also remain i am using this point over here the urea and the some other nitrogenous waste they'll be stored in our medullary fluid in the interstitial fluid that in order to maintain the osmolarity gradient i mean osmotic balance 
So, the urea is brought to the case of the kidneys actually in order to filter and eliminate the waste. So, the branch of the renal artery here entering into the case of renal artery are two which going to be uh, supplied to the respective kidneys of both right and the left side. And this renal artery is broken down into, broken down in the sense branched into the several branches called as afferent arteriole. Afferent arteriole is the blood vessel which reaches each nephron. So as I said, renal artery is the one and whereas one million nephrons are present in the each kidney, so they'll branch into the several blood vessels of which reach the each and every nephron. Okay, here the afferent arteriole enters into this and the network of blood capillaries is called as glomerulus. Actually speaking here, the nephron consists of two parts, the glomerulus and the renal tubule. What is this glomerulus? It's a network of blood capillaries. From where this network of blood capillaries will form? The branch of renal artery, the afferent arteriole will form that network called as glomerulus. Afferent arteriole enters into the nephron's part and it leaves out as efferent arteriole. Afferent towards efferent away, you know well. And the moving on to the case of here about the renal tubule. The renal tubule starts with a double walled structure, a cup-like structure called as Bowman's capsule. And here the Bowman's capsule is lined with simple squamous epithelium with podocytes, foot-shaped cells. Here, in the case of glomerulus, I don't need to say because in the previous session itself, we discussed that here, glomerulus, as I am saying, the capillaries, capillaries are the blood vessels which are lined with simple squamous epithelium called as endothelium. Okay, the Bowman's capsule is lined with simple cuboidal epithelium, uh, sorry, simple squamous epithelium with podocytes here. And moving on to the case of here, as I mentioned here, the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule together called as a malfeasant body or renal corpuscle. It's called as either malfeasant body or renal corpuscle. Together, glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. You are observing the picture, guys. The Bowman's capsule is continuing as a PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. And this proximal convoluted tubule is lined with simple cuboidal epithelium with brush borders. I stated this point several times in my previous videos. It's a uh, neat 2020 question where is lined with simple cuboidal epithelium with brush borders. I hope you got this point. I hope already it's imprinted in your brain if you are following my videos regularly. Next. Talking about this proximal convoluted tubule is leading into the hairpin turn. Is a hairpin turn loop called as Henle's loop. Remember guys, Henle loop is a characteristic feature of the nephrons, mammalian nephrons. is a characteristic feature of mammals. And this Henle's loop you are observing, the one which is moving downwards is called as a descending limb, which is towards upside is called as ascending limb. It have two limbs which is forming like a hairpin turn, U-pin turn, that is ascending limb and descending limb. And these descending limb is lined with a simple cuboidal epithelium or simple squamous epithelium, only these epithelium guys here. Descending limb is with simple squamous. Ascending limb, lower side with simple squamous and above is simple cuboidal. It have two segments, thin and thick segment. Thin segment with simple squamous, thick segment with simple cuboidal epithelium. Moving on to the case of here it is, the Henle's loop will continue as a distal convoluted tubule which we can call it as a DCT, distal convoluted tubule. And this distal convoluted tubule is also lined with a simple cuboidal epithelium. You can come across a squamous epithelium in glomerulus which is called as endothelium, simple squamous in the Bowman's capsule, simple squamous in the DCT and the, sorry, PCT and the case of here PCT what we discussed, simple cuboidal epithelium with brush borders. Squamous where I am saying here it is. Squamous in glomerulus in the Bowman's capsule and the descending limb and the thin segment of ascending limb where cuboidal epithelium, PCT, DCT and even collecting duct. In the case of the collecting duct also, what is this collecting duct? Several distal convoluted tubules of the nephron they'll open into the straight tube, the duct called as a collecting duct. 
and several connecting ducts will open into the medullary pyramids you know the renal pyramids and that opens into the calyces the projections and that leads into the renal pelvis so that it can be carried away by the ureter as you come to know the different parts of the nephron the functional unit of the kidney the malpighian corpuscle the pct and the dct are located in the cortex region of the kidney as we said outer is the cortex and inner is the medulla for the kidney and these three are present in the cortex region malpighian body you know malpighian body or corpuscle is nothing but the glomerulus and the bowman's capsule together called as malpighian corpuscle and also the pct and dct in the cortex region whereas the henle's loop or loop of henle is located in the medullary region based on this we'll going to discuss about the two types of nephrons guys here it is one is called as cortical nephrons in the book is given clearly that majority of the nephrons are cortical nephrons what are cortical nephrons in then actually speaking here it is the loop of henle is short only a small part of the loop of henle is present in the medullary region those are the cortical nephrons so majority as the nephron part is located in the cortex is called as cortical nephrons and they are majorly majority of nephrons are cortical moving on to the juxta medullary nephrons as the major contribution went with the cortical the leftover contribution the minor part is by the juxta medullary nephrons where the henle's loop is very longer henle's loop and these henle's loop the longer henle's loop if you talk about here this is majorly i mean major part is present in the medulla okay that's why it's called as juxta medullary nephrons guys moving on to the case of here about in the picture also you can see that as i said the part the but one the brings the blood to the renal artery is the one bringing the blood to the kidneys and it's branching into the afferent arteriole afferent arteriole forms the glomerulus and it leaves as efferent arteriole and this efferent arteriole is the one it is going to surround the renal tubule part of the pct and this dct part forming the called as peritubular network efferent arteriole which is leaving the bowman's capsule and here that is surrounding the renal tubule you can see in the picture called as peritubular network and a fine branch of the case of the blood vessel you can also see that which is running parallel to the henle's loop is called as vasa recta this itself continues and all the tubules join together to form as a renal vein renal artery brings the blood renal vein leaves the uh, sorry renal artery yeah renal artery brings the blood to the kidneys and renal vein will leaves the kidney as i said renal artery is rich in urea renal vein is obviously is least amount of urea because the filtration and elimination is obviously happens in the kidneys here and regarding this vasa recta one more important point here it is this vasa recta which is lining i mean running the parallel to the henle's loop is either reduced or absent in the case of cortical nephrons and is well developed in juxta medullary nephrons so cortical where only a small part of henle's loop is present in the cortex whereas in the case of juxta medullary major part is present in the case of the medullary regions and vasa recta is reduced or absent in cortical nephron and is well developed in the juxta medullary nephrons